Welcome back to another market closing live stream. Makes us wonder, is this today a bottom or just the beginning of the disaster? Remember, folks, we do have a big, 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 big catalyst coming tomorrow morning. It is CPI data. And as much as we hate and don't believe in the CPI, the market does. So if you're paying attention to the market, you got to be paying attention to CPI today. So he, uh, well, tomorrow. So here's the scoop. We were talking about this this morning in the course member live stream as well, which by the way, uh, remember you could use that uh, extended uh, coupon code uh, to the moon, kind of like we got the rocket ship to the moon right here, <laughs> uh, to join any of those programs with lifetime access to the existing lectures and the new lectures. But anyway, the uh, the big thing, one of the things we talked about, uh, and we've talked about this on the channel before as well, is uh, really sometimes we get buy the rumor, sell the news perfect example, a recent example of buy the rumor, sell the news, in my opinion, was Doge, right? We had buy the rumor, uh, prices go up for Doge leading up to the uh, SNL night. And then uh, minutes before SNL actually started, we see the price fall. Uh, and, and then the event happens and we kind of see, you know, uh, Dogecoin over the next few days settle around 50 cents uh, down from around that 64, 65 high. Uh, well, not high, but 64, 65 balance that we had uh, and support that we had before the actual event. Hold on a sec. What's this? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I thought there might have been an interesting market update, but it's not. Okay. So um, in with the CPI, we might actually get that in reverse, which would be very interesting because with a CPI, it's entirely possible that the CPI comes in much softer than we expect, much like it did in April when we were looking at the March data. Now we're going to be getting, we're looking in May at the April data. Uh, and if it comes in not as hot as expected, then the market's going to start realizing, wait a minute, maybe maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves thinking the market is overheating way more than it really is. And so what we want, and this is this like weird, crazy calibration of market that we're in right now, what we really want is we want growth but not like parabolic growth. So we want steady growth. We don't want to decline because that's bad news. We don't want parabolic growth because that's bad news because that's overheating. It means interest rates are going to go up sooner, right? We want nice and steady, calm growth. This is why when some of those tech earnings came out and they're like that, like super hot, market freaks out. Things go bad, market freaks out too. It's got to be like, perfect, like for a little child. <laughs> and then the market's happy. It's it's very, very, very bizarre. But uh, those are that's what I would be paying attention for tomorrow. Now, tomorrow is going to be the worst headline inflation reading uh, possibly of this pandemic. Next month might be slightly worse or slightly better. We'll see. But uh, tomorrow's going to be pretty bad. We're going to end up getting a headline year over year inflation reading of like 3.5, 3.6%. Uh, but the big number we're going to be looking at is that month over month data. So we'll have to pay attention to that. Uh, let's go ahead and jump on over to the sticks. Month over month data. We really want to see that, you know, half percent, 0.6% or less. Quite frankly, less is probably not a horrible thing either. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, let's focus on what's been going on in stocks here because we've had, you know, We've had a little bit of a recovery here. In fact, I think the easiest thing to do is let's start by looking at the S and P. the uh, The S and P is is still down. You know, we'll go to the hour chart here. Uh, it's still down, but you can really see it's been recovering here the second half of the day. As I say, that we get a tiny little red stick right here, uh, and uh, Tesla's recovered pretty decently as well. I mean, look at that Tesla recovering. Uh, this is on the hour candle here. But uh, I mean, we were down at five seventy eight in the pre market this morning. I put a buy order in early this morning as well. Uh, so you can buy the dip. Don't don't give up a good dip opportunity, you know? But anyway, uh, you you really see, which of course, anytime I buy something, you get the exact amount that I bought and uh, what I bought uh, in the Stocks and Psychology Money Group. But anyway, this right here, I mean, this is a very nice recovery in the day. We were better. We were, you see, early in the morning when we were doing the market open, we actually bumped to only being down 0.7%. Now we're down about 1.18%. But, but I mean, we've had some pretty crazy fluctuations throughout the day when we uh, get out of sort of the uh, our candlesticks here. But on an hourly basis, we actually did very, very well uh, on a recovery today on Tesla. Look at Roblox, though. Roblox is the one that really took off. I mean, we just, quite frankly, went from IPO price to moon. <laughs> I mean, it was like this morning, we're like, wow, Roblox back under IPO price. When is this freaking thing going to get off IPO? Boom, jumps, 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 20%. Absolutely incredible. 
Uh, we've got, uh, let me go to uh, the All Stocks chat here. There we go. Uh, then we've got Big Digital also bounces off that buck. Yesterday we were saying it's going to a buck, but boom, jumps right off of uh, a dollar, goes right back to about a buck 30 here. Uh, and the reason it's up 18% rather than 30% is because it, it fell 10% uh, and then went to positive 20%. Same thing with Plug Power. I mean, again, the fact that Plug Power is like 20 two twenty three dollars is is really really absolutely incredible uh in, in terms of being cheap but uh remember with plug power and this is a big thing i think a lot of folks forget and i've talked about this in my plug video as well is plug power is like a 2030s play that's kind of like quantum scape is like a 25 26 play right uh you know lucid's like a 2022 23 play right you, you really want to establish what what year are these the plays in what years are you expecting moves in these in and uh, i don't like buying too far out uh to actually start seeing some moves this is one of the reasons tesla has been nice for the last few years because they're actually producing or actually moving products and we could see sort of reception or fud or drama related to uh to tesla certainly a lot of the drama with tesla a lot of it is is uh, silliness, and and that's one of the things I like analyzing too. Is I like seeing like, hey, how how valid are, are some of these uh, these these concerns? And sometimes with Tesla, you're just like, seriously, the Austin crash was ridiculous as an example of of just pure Tesla fud. And then what do we end up finding out today, this morning? Listen, I, I think I read it this morning. I don't know, maybe maybe that was yesterday. I read it, but uh, read that the uh, Austin crash that there was a home security footage that was found and uh, the home security footage uh yeah the home security footage ended up showing the driver originally getting in the driver's seat of the car and so it's uh, and we have evidence now that the auto steer was not on but maybe they were able to turn on cruise control which just maintains your speed but uh does not uh, provide you any kind of steering assistance so it's so you know really really weird and we got a big sell off after that information First, when the crash first came out on Tesla, but it just shows you just when you dive in, some of the fun is is just blah, blah, blah. Huh? anyway. Uh, so anyway, Houston crash. Did I, did I say did I say Austin? I may have said Austin. When I think of Texas, I'm, I've been, lately I've been thinking too much about Austin, uh, and mostly that's. <laughs> uh that's because everyone from california keeps leaving <laughs> to go there uh but anyway uh all cars have cruise control yes but only teslas deserve to sell off <laughs> uh but anyway so uh palantir up uh 8.9 percent today i mean it fell as low as 16 dollars a share this morning really really incredible so hopefully you're able to get a, a dip buy in on palantir uh, we've got a doge at 51 cents right now. Volatility down from where it was this morning. Volatility this morning was up at about 14, 15%. It is down uh, to about 8.3% now. I do expect the potential for continued volatility. So if, if you do, or if you're sort of bummed that you missed maybe a dip here or whatever, well, A, I think if the dips end and we just go to the moon, everyone's going to be happy. But B, I think there's still a good potential for seeing uh, more, uh, more dips. So I, I would just be cautious. <laughs> uh, then we've got, uh, Upwork is, uh, 6.88% to the upside. And don't get me wrong. I'm still like hundred percent invested. I've got next to no cash available. <laughs> it's great. Not really, <laughs> but anyway, uh, Ethereum just over 4,000 again, 4,050 here. Endeavor coming back a little bit trade desk after that massive sell-off yesterday up uh 4.47 percent uh yesterday was just a complete disaster they were down about 25 percent pre-market they fell even more we did recover from pre-market lows as with uh many things here snowflake back over 200 this thing was under 200 for a moment and boy oh boy the dip did not last long kind of like with peloton peloton was at like what 82 this morning in the pre-market yeah i think i want to say it was like 82 83 this morning in the pre-market you could definitely see 83 there uh, Lemonade still sitting at 73. DocuSign 196. Under 200 for DocuSign, I like, by the way. Uh, pins up 3% back over 60. Good. EXPI back up about 3%. Good. Coinbase back over 300. That 260 dip was, oh, juicy, juicy, juicy. Back over 300. Uh, this Coinbase, I think uh, they got, got a lot, had a lot of insider selling pressure. And it's unfortunate because I think the true valuation is way higher than where the market is placing it now 
But uh, hey, the market does not have to agree with your opinions. <laughs> uh, in the long term, though, uh, they they, uh, they can often converge. So uh, Etsy trying to get back to 170 here, struggling to get back to 170. We got Amazon in the green, was in the red this morning along with Apple. Haven't seen Apple yet. We'll see where Apple is. Churchill Capital is only down about half percent. Peter Rawlinson was interviewed on uh, CNBC this morning. He seemed a little bummed out. Uh, but then again, we did compare him in the course member live stream. We were kind of comparing him to uh, his his like previous interviews. And even though he seemed bummed out this morning, I think partly his personality is a little like may, maybe could deem, be deemed a little bit more quiet or, or anyway. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I, I don't know if he was like much more bummed than maybe he could usually come across. Carnival working towards plan for possible July restart on U.S. In U.S. on select chips. Oh, that's cool. That's good. Uh, let's see if I wonder if CCL is going to move on that news because CCL that that's 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 good news. Uh, let's go to the minute chart here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CCL is moving on that news. Jeez, man, it's so fast. Uh, yeah, that's great. But that that is good. Uh, Carnival definitely uh, definitely deserves to do some freaking cruises. All right. So what else we got here? All uh, right. Uh, towards the downside, we do have Pfizer down about 1.42. Carnival moving now. Keep an eye on that one. Walgreens is almost down 2%, 1.8. Poshmark's down a couple percent. We've got a firm down again, 2.67. Redfin's down 2.84. Nordstrom, 3.94 to the downside. Some of the recovery kind of selling off a little bit as I feel like uh, some recovery and momentum selling off. IPOE, Marathon, Playboy, very good food. These guys selling off a little bit here in the Nordstrom and Macy's and that. So some momentum, some of the uh, travel companies here selling off Airbnb, Spirit. Uh, maybe because we're kind of getting a little bit of that rotation over here towards those that uh, that have just been decimated over the last few months here. Uh, entirely possible. So we'll keep an eye on that. Let's go ahead and listen in for a moment to CNBC. See what we got. Uh, that can't demonstrate that at this point. I mean, what? it sounds like you're really trying to draw a distinction. The, the shares have been cut in half, basically, uh, down to 20. They were they were trading in the in the high 40s at one point. D so, do you think that is a broader move around momentum and growth names and higher valuation post IPO names, or or is there some misunderstanding here about this stock yeah. and this story? No, I think I think the 40 dollar number uh, last year, whatever, uh, was really was just a matter. We have no idea. We'll come back. What this past year has been like, I understand there was record demand for data servers because everybody was stuck at home. Technology yep. was on fast forward when it came to the digitization of work and play and just living. Yeah, no doubt. As I've told people, the overall demand backdrop for digital infrastructure is as strong as I've seen it in the 25 plus years that I've been around the sector. You know, data is being created, wow. moved, analyzed, stored nah. at an accelerating rate. Let's get, get a little bit more look into the market here. Let's go to Bloom. As of course, you've seen that further negative correlation. There is something else going on, but it is not higher yields yeah. that is scaring this market. And I think we've mm -hmm. kind of saw that reflected in some of the moves that we saw uh, with regards to uh, that real yield and more importantly, the lack of moves that we saw. In it. And I think that gave you an indicator, uh, indication here uh, that there was a little bit more to this sell off uh, than just the yield story here, Caroline. We have got the perfect voice, guys, now to discuss whether you should still be going into value, whether you've been sticking with growth. Yana Barton's with us, of course, Growth Equities Co-Director at Eden Vance. And you're going to be riding out up until the market close with us, Yana. And, of course, you've got skin in the game. But when you see this sort of yesterday sell-off in growth and then the dip buying that comes back, yeah. do you see the opportunity still ripe across most of growth or just limited? Let's hear it. You know, Caroline, I'm I'm so um, happy to be here. I feel like every year we go through this reset and it feels new every time we sort of <laughs> test <laughs> some lows uh, in the market. I think generally speaking for context, higher the growth opportunity, higher the, the risking or the potential risk. Meaning information technology as a sector over the past 10 year period has experienced nearly 15% drawdown on any given calendar year. Year to date, it's been about 10 percentage points. So this is very normal, it feels very uncomfortable, but guess what, over that 10 year period, it generated over 20%
annualized return. That's nearly Boom. 700 basis points better than S&P 500. So Boom. there's no reward without some level of risk. So, um, and I think as growth investors, we need to remember that. Certainly, uh, absolutely. As a growth investor, though, do you sort of take a more broader approach here? Do you pick baskets of stocks? Do you pick indices, ETFs, or do you go for those individual names, Yana? YOLO. I think the name of the game is GARP, which is growth at a reasonable price, which also means uh, straight down the middle. We've said all along, and the first time I was uh, on your show back in January, is that this is a year where you want to be invested in secular growth stories alongside cyclical and stable growth. And while tech has been the worst performer year to date, there have been pockets of opportunities within the growth areas yeah. of consumer staples, of industrials, of healthcare, And that's exactly how you want to be positioned going forward. All right, Yana, we have a, a, quite a few questions uh, that we want to get to with you. We need to take a commercial break here. Uh, we're speaking with Yana Barton, Growth Equities Co-Director at Eaton I Vance. like that. I like Garp. That was, I'm writing that one down. That was good. I'm a I'm a garp some of my 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 my, my garp up. <laughs> Can I do that? Can I garp my garp? I, I, I that's good. And you know one of the reasons that we're measuring garp in the course, which every day over the last uh, really week we've been touching on this, uh, has has been finding our deals within the sell off to find which are the most reasonably priced within the sell-off that has been driving my purchase decisions uh and uh i i really like garp as uh as as a tool for that so i'm gonna write that down growth at a reasonable price that's a good one write that one down i got my uh i got my battle notebook see look at that in case you hadn't seen it from yesterday got the little star wars battle notebook here all right I also changed some of the background a little bit. I just added a bunch of stuff. See, look. Ah, you got the D Mead. We got the scimitar. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the top of the axe right there. Oh, you can't see that that well. It's a big old axe. <laughs> but anyway. All right, let's focus. 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 What am I doing? <laughs> all right, let's, let's see what CNBC's got to say. Uh, let's listen in. Nothing. Nothing. It's on a commercial. What is this garbage? Uh, oh, it's back. It's back from commercial. Okay, we'll give him a shot. Free coverage of all the action going into the close. CNBC senior markets commentator Mike Santo here to break down these crucial moments of the trading day. And today we've got Short Hills Capital Partners Chief Investment Officer Steve Weiss with us as well. Very good afternoon to you, Steve. Let's kick things off with the broader market. Stocks under pressure, but well off the session lows. The Nasdaq was down 2.2% at the uh, lower the session is now down uh, just 0.1 percent. The Dow remains uh, significantly lower, though 500 points or so, one and a half percent. The lower the session for the Dow is 670. Mike, uh, interestingly, the start of the day was fears of inflation. All right, we, uh, we already knew we know about the start of the day because we were here at the start of the day. I don't care about the start of the day. I want to go back and I want to talk. I want to go look at the sticks. So that's what we're gonna. Oh man, I dropped the diamond hands, folks. Look at this, by the way. Have you seen this? Look, well, sorry, that's those are the six. But look what somebody sent me. How cool is this? How freaking cool is that? Look at that. It is a fully colorized diamond hand man. And because I got a child too, diamond hand child. <laughs> I actually have two kids, but but I, I appreciate this. This could be the representation of both kids. And this could be the representation of diamond hand daddy. Diamond hand daddy, diamond hand kid. Okay? But no question, you diamond hand. <laughs> yeah, they're 3D printed. They're really cool. I like them. And, and that's no shade on the person who gave me the non-colorized one, but those are freaking cool. All right. Where were we? <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. So uh, honest getting burned. Man, it sucks to be honest. <laughs> that, that does not sound, that is not a good quote. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so what do we got over here? Uh, yeah, on, honest, just getting destroyed in the day here, nine percent to the downside. Uh, did it, it's not quite at the lowest levels that we hit here, but uh, anyway, social capital down 7.54 percent. Uh, Lion Electric is uh, trying to recover a little bit, barely though. 
trying to come up here 8.5 uh, 2% here to the uh, downside uh, we've got Playboy rotating down a little bit, giving up some of those fat gains. Uh, Playboy has just been really, really incredible in terms of a SPAC for a while. Why? Oh, my gosh. Uh, and then uh, we've got, uh, what do we got here? BTX. BTX. Wasn't this up today? Yeah, it was. Yeah, at one point, this was like way up. And now it's down again. This one moves so crazy. I mean, this that one's almost just entertaining to watch, quite frankly. Uh, all right, so we got 10 minutes to the closing bell. Let's do a, I want to do a quick peek at the coins, okay? So look at this. Look at that uptrend on Doge, folks. That is nice. Let's go to the five minute just to smooth this out a little bit. That's not bad. That is a nice uptrend uh, from, from what we've seen here. Uh, this is probably uh, the Elon Musk tweet over here. Elon Musk sell off, uh, but a very, very steady uptrend right here on Doge. So very nice. Certainly beats the levels where we were yesterday in sort of the mid 40s. So very nice. We do have, uh, look at this, Go EV. Go EV has been one that has just been getting wrecked, absolutely wrecked in this market. Uh, it didn't help that their, uh, their what's it called? Uh, oh, that was Friday. Okay. It didn't help that their earnings call sucked. Like, honestly, out of all of the earnings call transcripts that I've been reading, I don't listen anymore. I just read them. Uh, that one was the worst. I hate to say it, but it was pretty bad of the ones that I read. Uh, Microvision up uh, 5%. It's nice. Some recovery here. They were red as well. And so was Jivo. Jivo right back here in the uh, five, five buck range. Have I seen the Doge Killer Leash? Yeah, that's the same company uh, that uh, does the Shibu Inu. I'm pretty sure. Mm, hold on. Oh, I want to hear more from her. Shibu token. Yeah, here. Hold on. Let me turn them up because I want to hear them. All of the above. I think you named it all. I think uh, the ultimate investor yeah. is looking okay. at the makeup of the backdrop of higher inflationary pressures, which obviously limits the valuation levels and potential price levels. You uh -huh. will potentially have higher taxes, particularly yep. as it relates to IT and healthcare space where IP is such an important part. Um, and these are more multi uh, sort of national entities. And then you just have the overall aspect of higher valuations where in the market that is sort of de-risking and sniffing out the terminal value that is uh, more appropriate given the shorter term horizon. Obviously that is not where you would be leaning toward higher growth, higher momentum, higher valuation investments. How much are your clients at the moment happy to ride this as a bounce of volatility? How much are you telling them that this is going to remain or are these just one-offs, Yana? Um, it's a great question. Good news is we're not getting a lot of calls yet. I think um, over <laughs> the past 15 plus years, we've conditioned them in our focus growth strategy that as a long-term investor, you do- She means not getting a lot of calls yet to leave their fund. You have had these localized corrections, particularly within software, particularly within IT services, and even some of the healthcare technology space that has really been hit hard alongside um, life science tools. And that's where we're leaning in, meaning long-term fundamentals. I mean, we talked about colonial um, pipeline and the fact that cybersecurity is not going away. And while trillions of dollars are being spent on IT um, every year, less than 10 percentage points are being spent on cloud computing, and uh, security. I, I suspect that okay. number is going I'm to I'm going to pull off the security talk. Security is something I agree that is something that's very, very important that we need to spend some more time focusing on. Uh, I am a little surprised that we, we don't focus on it more. Um, I mean, obviously, after Jerome Powell warned against it, uh, it seemed like nobody really cared. And now we got the colonial hack, which is pretty bad. But uh, let's see what he We're says expecting. here. The share price reaction, though, has been a little bit disjointed. I mean, for some of these companies, they've seen a nice little pop. And others, uh, the reaction was almost to the downside. What, what did investors see out of this earnings season so far? That's a great point. I mean, we're about 90% there. A little over 90% of S&P 500 companies have reported. And earnings to date are nearing 50%. That's 50% increase year over year for quarterly uh, profits uh, yeah. in the S&P 500. And by the way, at the end of the year, that number was 15%, which is incredible. And that's one of the reasons we're seeing them ironically sell off is because it's like overheating. 
earnings and revenue trajectory is actually increasing rather than decreasing, yeah. which is just astounding give, given the growth rates that I just mentioned. But Romain, you, you mentioned a very important point, which is the market reacts not to the absolute number, but was it better or worse? And to your point, um, less than 60% of companies have moved higher on these record actually setting numbers. In fact, IT was the worst. Only 33% of the S&P 500 IT constituents moved higher on price. That tells you a lot about valuation, what was already baked into these stocks prior to earnings. All right, we're speaking here with Yana Barton, Growth Equities Co-Director over at Eaton Van. She's sticking with us good. as we count you down to the close about five minutes She's ago. good. Let's go ahead and jump on over to CNBC. We, got, we do have five minutes to the close. Let's listen to CNBC just for a moment here, and we'll look at the sticks again. All those stocks and some people look to short that instead of shorting the Q's or the SMH. So the bounce, I think, is some short covering as the NASDAQ recovered. Good point. It really has become a proxy. Earlier this hour, I was going to mention we spoke exclusively with St. Louis Fed President James Bullard. Here's what he said about the Fed's tapering timeline. I'd like to get out of the pandemic more solidly than we are today. Um, so I, I'd Man, like that wasn't even the best part of the interview. I tweeted about that. Check Real Meet Kevin on Twitter. I, I tweeted a little bit about him. Okay, let's go to the sticks for a moment here. CNBC is going to show the boring parts. It was long. It was like a 15-minute interview. All right, let's see here. Let's go ahead. Um, so... Seawall, Seawall for Shibu. Tell me more. Somebody tell me more about this cell wall. Cell wall. Cell, cell not sea wall. Sea, cell wall for Shibu. Uh, anyway, all right, let's look at uh, the candles here. Uh, you know, sometimes what we can do to cheat a little bit, by the way, is you can just look at the spark lines to kind of see what's falling a little bit towards the close. Like, for example, this one's gaining a little bit into the close. Let's see, we can kind of just get a quick cheat here uh, by looking at the spark line. So uh, we do see uh, Playboy. Uh, edging down a little bit here towards the close. We have, what do we got over here? Uh, we've got Rocket Mortgage just getting destroyed. We've got, Vol says sell all. Yeah, sell all so we can buy more. <laughs> uh, what else do we have here? Oh, let's see what we have for earnings coming up. That's a good idea. Yeah, let's pull up the earnings calendar. I always like knowing, seeing what earnings calendar is going to be. Uh, yes, the other Kevin. Sure, I could. I would interview the CEO of SafeMoon. I think that'd be very interesting. Let's do it. Make it happen. All right, so the earnings calendar here today, I can never pronounce that one right. FUBU, FOBO, whatever, TV. A lemonade reports today. EA reports today. Unity reports today. Hylion reports. Open Door reports. Wow, Grocery Outlet. Yeah, Upstart reports. We got some, re we got some reporting today. Oh, this is going to be exciting. We better get these ready. This is lots and lots of stuff to get ready to report on. So uh, let's uh, quickly get a brief look here to see. Two minutes to the closing bell. What's happening here? Looks like Canoe is accelerating its run. A plug's a little flat. Big is kicking butt today on this rebound. My goodness. Uh, Luminar Tech doing very, very well on a rebound here. We've got Trade Desk up 5% here, moving up very, very nicely. Peloton moving up nicely. EXPI is moving up. Big, big old rebound. And it does make you wonder, was this the bottom? It, or, or is this just the beginning? And I think those inflation numbers could end up being a uh, buy the news moment where we do end up seeing the short start unwinding, realizing, okay, maybe we did have some temporary uh, temporarily high inflation, and we will still see temporarily high inflation, but maybe we'll start rotating to the downside uh, in terms of uh, inflation expectations not being as high for as long. We'll see. Tesla a little soft into the close here, going in at about 117. Let's go ahead and listen to CNBC here as we hit the closing bell, and I will get earnings ready. Let's go. One minute until the close. Take a look at the major averages. Today's the day the Dow gets dragged in to the mud with the Dow down 489 sure. points. It was looking a lot worse earlier in the session. We got down to lower than 600 points, but most Dow stocks are lower. And we are looking at our worst day for the Dow since the end of February. Home Depot, United Healthcare, and Goldman Sachs are the biggest drags. 
Nike and Salesforce are some rare winners. Technology is outperforming. Nike gets an upgrade from Jeffrey, says there's 40% upside on that stock. As yeah. far as the S&P 500 is concerned, every sector is lower right now except for materials. Energy is the hardest hit along with utilities. And the NASDAQ actually fares better than the worst but than the rest of the It's harder to hear her because she's actually there live now. They've moved from the studio to there. Can't even hear her anymore. They got to fix that audio. Bad. She just stops talking. <laughs> the closing bell, everyone. I'm Wilfred Cross alongside Sarah Eisen and Mike Santoli, CBC Senior Markets Commentator. We finished down 472 points uh, on the Dow, though the low of the session was down 670, but still a 1.4% decline for the Dow. S&P 500 down 0.9%. The Nasdaq down just 0.1%. It had been down 2.2%. So a remarkable intraday recovery for the tech heavy. heavy. It Nasdaq really was. Materials was the only sector positive on the S&P 500, followed by tech and communication services, which were only slightly negative by the close. Uh, but uh, energy, utilities, financials, uh, all down more than 1.5%. Coming up, Sartori Fund founder Dan Niles on whether he's seeing any buying opportunities amid the recent tech sector volatility. Plus, we're awaiting results from EA, Fubo TV, Lemonade, and QuantumScape. We'll have instant analysis. QuantumScape. As soon as they are released. Stephen Weiss uh, from Short Hills Capital uh, is still with us. And Joyce Chang from JP. Okay, folks, these are the ones I have up. Tell me if I'm missing anything, okay? I got QuantumScape, Open Door, Unity, EA. Oops. Hold on. I screwed it up. I screwed it up. Uh, yeah, I screwed it up. Okay, here we go. I'm going to say this wrong. I don't know how to say it. Fo Fobo, Fubu TV, whatever. That one. Uh, Lemonade, Sundial, Unity. Uh, oh, that. Okay, there we go. And there we go. Sorry, I'm a little slow today. There we go. Okay, Open Door and QuantumScape. Okay, did I get Sundial? I got Sundial. Yep. Okay, so no earnings yet. I have uh, FUBU, whatever, Lemonade, Sundial, Unity. Uh, Unity, I have twice up here. I feel like I'm missing one. EA. Oh, that's probably, that's the one I'm missing. EA and QuantumScape. I want to make sure I have these guys up too. Anything else? V v Vizio? Vizio? I could probably, I could put them up. Uh, let's put them up as well. Vizio and uh individual company news oh there we go ea just reported oh wow that came in fast okay ea reports uh 1.23 adjusted eps versus 1.06 adjusted revenue coming in at 1.49 versus expectations of 1.4 that's good that's a beat we have a maintained dividend at 17 cents we have a q1 uh, adjusted eps at 55 cents uh, this is a forward uh -oh, versus the estimate of 65 cents. That's down. So guidance for adjusted EPS is actually down 10 cents. But adjusted revenue is up 1.25 billion versus 1.14. So EA missing on guidance here, but beating. We've got 2022 uh, revenue of 7.3 billion expected versus 6.6. .6. So, I mean, that, that guidance is good. It's just the next quarter they're expecting to be a little bit shafter. So, uh, okay, yeah, what else do we have here? So that's EA. That's kind of mixed news there. Not not great. I don't think that's what anybody really wanted to hear there. Uh, that is the first one to report so far. Let's go ahead and pull up the sticks and just see if we can pull EA and see what EA looks like here. So let's give EA a look. Oh, yeah, that's a little bit of a decline here. So EA and the after hours, let's grab after hours. There we go. So in the after hours, EA is down about 2%. It's actually not horrible. The candlesticks make it look a little worse and 2% down uh, or to the downside rather. Let's go back. We'll just kind of have CNBC up here in the background uh, while I read off uh, anything that comes up here. So waiting on, uh, we got the Vizio one, I'm probably mispronouncing that. We've got Unity. That is on standby. We have Sundial on standby, a Lemonade on standby, and uh, yeah, the Fobo, whatever, TV. Uh, I'm not sure. Should we put open? Uh, we can put Highly on in here. We'll throw Highly on down. 
And I know there are quite a few of you who uh, like Hylian. So I'll throw that in for you. And I'll also throw in... I don't, do we care about Grocery Outlet? I don't know. I'll just put them in anyway. Grocery Outlet. See, it doesn't even come... Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. All right. We're on standby for the next set of earnings here. So we saw EA uh, beat on earnings but miss on guidance. We are waiting for the next one. Okay, here we go. Vizio Holdings comes in with revenue of 505.7, EPS of two cents, net of $3.3 million. Not sure what the expectations were on that one. Uh, let's see here. Vizio earnings expectations. We could do a quick look on that. Is Unity out? Ah, uh, Unity just came out. Yep, Q1 loss per share of 39 cents. Software raises uh, the so Unity software raises 2021 revenue outlook to one billion dollars. Wow. Uh, announces first quarter financial results at 234.8 million in revenue, beating the 216.1 expected. So that's a good beat for uh, Unity on revenue. Waiting for guidance to come in. Okay, guidance is greater. Q2 guidance coming in at. 240 to 245 versus estimates of 230.2. That's a beat. So that's a beat on earnings. That's a beat on guidance. Fiscal year revenue is also a beat. Yeah, we are, uh, we, this is a triple beat on Unity here. This is very, very good. The estimate was 970.9 on Unity. And uh, the forecast is at 1.0 to 1.02 billion. So that is a very good beat on Unity. It's a triple beat on Unity. FUBU, whatever, TV revenue came in at 119.7 million, beating estimates of 103.6. So that is also a beat at uh, FUBO TV. FUBO TV. FUBO TV beats. Uh, we do not yet have Sundial, Lemonade. Unity had a triple beat, was very, very good. Uh, EA was, was definitely a miss. Adjusted EPS expectations, or I'm sorry, EPS expectations, non adjusted, were for 26, uh, or the expectations were for a dollar and five cents. They actually came in at 26 cents. Let's see what CNBC is deciding to cover first. We're in Q4 results here, 26 cents. So that's unlikely comparable to estimates. Yay. Adjusted revenue, 1.4. Wow, we covered that a long time ago, CNBC. You're missing out here. Grocery outlet just reported EPS comes in lower than expected. Uh, at 19 cents versus 22 cents expected. However, net sales came in roughly in line at 752.5 million versus an estimate of 759. It's a slight miss actually on both ends uh, there. Uh, all right, let's listen to CNBC here. This conference call kicks off at 5 p.m. Eastern. Back to you all. Josh, thanks so much for that. Steven, do, do you like this one? You know, I'm looking for an opportunity to buy this, and hopefully this will give it to me. Okay, I'm going to pull off what they're yapping about here. I want to see Unity after hours here. So, uh, oh, Upstart. Oh, did Upstart report? Because Upstart's up like 8.5% here in after hours here. Upstart. Let's check out Upstart, individual company news. I think they may have reported today. Uh, let's see here. Announces first quarter results. They're not even breaking them down for me. What a ripoff. Okay. Well, fine. This is a public document, so there's no secret here. Upstart total revenue came in at 121 million, an increase of 90% from the first quarter of 2020. Uh, let's see. Income from operations was 15.6 billion, up 0.6 from prior year. And I want to look at just their EPS specifically. I'm going to go to the, I'm going to cheat a little bit and go to the bottom line here. All right, net income attributable to shareholders diluted was about 11 cents. Good. Profitable. And that was for the three months end of 2021. And they had uh, they had losses beforehand, uh, or, or at least no earnings to report beforehand. So that's good. That's a good year over year move for Upstart. Let's go ahead and look at the sticks here. So if I go, yeah, Upstart's doing well. I want to see Unity. Unity, there it is. Okay, Unity is up uh, only 1.95% on a triple B. Man. That's uh that's kind of boring. Unity had a triple beat and it's barely up in the after hours. That's that's boring. Boring. Uh upstart up 6.9%. Open door moving up. I want to see if open door actually reported here. Open door. I have them up here somewhere. Oh, I thought I did. Maybe I don't. 
All right. Well, they're up about 4%. That's going to be good for Zillow and Redfin. They're all obviously in the same boat. Yeah, Open Door just came out a couple minutes ago. Open Door comes in at uh, 48 cents as a loss per share. Oh, their revenue came in strong. 747 million versus 620 expected. That's a really good beat. And their loss, their loss was only, and I know that sounds crazy, but their loss was only 20.8 million versus estimates of 134 million. That's a very good beat on Open Door. And it makes sense. Real estate market is just booming. Wow, Fubu is up 10%. 90,000 subscribers. Uh, the analysts had been expecting about 528,000 subscribers. And it shows you how like how finicky this is. I mean, yeah, Fubu beat, but not by that much. I mean, maybe. I mean, 119 mil of revenue versus 103 of expectations. Unity had a triple beat. Unity's barely moving. Well, Unity had a triple beat on everything, and Unity's up 1.3%. Upstart uh, is is up 9.64% right now, and uh, FUBU is up 10%. I mean, those guys kick butt. Open Door did well as well, only up 4%, though. So those are the those are the ones that are really kicking butt in the after hours right now. So see how funny it is, how how the market moves or does not move. Around the rest of the world uh, for, for the rest of this year, do you, do you think there could be some positive surprises there and some catch-up uh, to be played? Well, Europe will catch up in the third. Still waiting on Sundial. We had you know, a very disappointing first quarter, but we're looking at close to 15% growth in Europe. You know, on uh, Vizio, Q1 revenue uh, was boosted, but it says your profits slip as expenses rise. Waiting for... Uh, yeah, Open Door comes in much better. I mean, much lower loss than expected. Really, at this point, waiting for Lemonade, which Lemonade is scheduled for later. Um, will follow that. Now, in emerging markets, I don't think you're going to be some, seeing some of that recovery until you know, later into the second um, half of the year as they get the vaccinations um, you know, rolled out. So that's where we've seen more of the disappointments um, so far this year, with China very deliberately, though, um, going towards policy divergence and more normalization. Lizanne, finally, I just wanted to hit the energy sector with you because it, it's either the best performing group or the worst performing group on the market these days. Today, it was the worst, down 2.6%, but it's still up almost 40% for the year with everything going on with the Colonial Pipeline and, and fuel prices and just the, the general mood around the economic reopening. Is energy still a good bet? Uh, yeah, in fact, we actually uh, just upgraded energy to an outperform rating from a neutral, and that adds to the financials and healthcare, which have been outperform ratings for a while. So we now have three outperform ratings inclusive of energy. That said, I would go back to the view. Okay, that boring. Drive with it. that and cut off all the other progressive far left wish lists for another day. Well, you're absolutely right. You remember Bernie Sanders voted for it in the committee and I voted for it, came out of the committee unanimously. Uh, and then ultimately the House under Nancy Pelosi rejected it because she wanted the full Green New Deal instead. If President Biden is really serious and wants a, wants a proposal that will work for the country rather than just a photo op, then this is the way to go with his base bill. All right. All right. Enough of this. Enough of this junk. Let's take a look at how everything else is behaving in the after hours. Nothing, nothing entertaining on TV. They've been boring. They've been, they've been mainstream. <laughs> uh, Lemonade all of a sudden popping here a little bit in just the last two minutes, but I have not seen earnings come through here. Is this, uh, is this what we call insider trading? Uh, <laughs> I still don't see it. Where's it? Where's Lemonade tomorrow? Maybe it's is it not today? No, I thought it. I'm pretty sure it was today. Earnings, yeah, no, lemonade scheduled for today. That's moving up a little bit, just in anticipation of, or somebody caught wind of something that we didn't hear about. Oh well, let's go ahead and look at the sticks again. Let's see what we got. Uh, righty then. Uh, remember, the platform we use to look at the sticks is Weeble. Deposit a hundred dollars with Weeble, and you will get two free stocks worth up to eighteen hundred fifty dollars. Link down below or go to metkevin.com slash Weeble. See, look at that. Redfin following open door up. That's what I, I mentioned that right away. As soon as I read those earnings, I go, that's going to be good for Redfin and Zillow. I don't see Zillow up here, but Redfin is certainly catching up to that reaction. Redfin's been one that's definitely sold down a little bit here uh, just in the last few uh, couple months, actually. Uh, Fubo doing very well here at 12.7%. Upstart doing great. 
Looking at the uh, downside, I uh, really don't have that much in the downside here. Let's go to all stocks here and just compare. Yeah, no, not, not, no, not really. Let's see here. Looking at the after hours, arrivals down 2.6, trying to get back to that $20 there. Microvision down a couple percent in the afters. Chivo down a couple percent in the after hours again. But yeah, beyond this, no, not really seeing uh, uh, crazy moves here. We've got Bitcoin almost back to 57. Nice rally here on Bitcoin in, uh, what is this, uh, five minutes? Yeah, about the last eight hours. So really nice rally there on Bitcoin. Same roughly true of Ethereum and Dogecoin. Very nice and stable recoveries here. So very, very good. Very good. Somebody says, I'm eliminate earnings tomorrow before market. I don't know. I think it's tonight. What I see is it's listed at 535. It's going to be interesting. I'll be doing an interview, by the way, with uh, Chris Camillo soon, which uh, which will be really uh, uh, exciting. So that'll be uh, at uh, 2 p.m., which is in about 45 minutes. So make sure to come join that. We'll be talking about the market. Market crafts will be looking for uh, opportunities. So, uh, okay. Uh, what else do we have? So let's see what else we have. Let's go to CNBC for a moment here and see what we got over here. All right, let's pop on over. Here we go. Metrics and looking at the 10 year treasuries, because the 10 year treasuries, the Fed is in there buying, you know, 80 billion in bonds a month, 120 billion in total debt a month. And so yeah. that's artificially low. You look at the 10 year break even, wow. you're at levels last seen in 2013. And all the inflation. He's not wrong about that. And are all running pretty hot. And you've got you know, multiple prices at multiple, you know, multi year highs, whether it's lumber, corn wheat, oil, you know, you, you pick it, um, they're all going straight up. And the economies aren't even fully open yet around the world. So I think those numbers are going to continue to get hotter. And within the sector in the market, relative oh. to areas we like better, like banks or energy, which that guy's getting hacked by the suits. So, so what will be sufficient to spark a bit of a of a sell off? Is it just a high inflation print tomorrow, or is it then the Fed starting to talk about tapering or even about rate hikes? Yeah, I mean, I think it's the second thing that you said. I mean, all of these are inputs into the Fed's decision, and the Fed doesn't want to raise rates, right? They've said, we're going to keep rates here through 2023. Well, we're talking about the tapering question, which is they're buying $120 billion in bonds a month. And if you look at it, you know, Canada in late April was the first G7 central bank that said, okay, we're going to taper our bond purchase. Okay, we're going to pull off this for a moment. Uh, and we've got, take a look at this. I, I, this is interesting. We are talking about this a little bit this morning. And this is the, uh, uh, one sec, sorry. I wanted to show this here. Okay, so this is the 10-year treasury. We track this one regularly because Bitcoin seems to play with this chart. Bitcoin seems to go up when this goes up. We also, when the rate of change on the 10-year goes up, we tend to see stocks sell off. So when we get these inversions to the upside or these rotations to the upside, we, we tend to see some pain in stocks. Not always. A lot of folks are now using the 10-year the break even, which is sort of a, a way of using the treasury protected securities to measure uh, potential inflation expectations. And uh, that chart has kind of just been straight up. It gives us a little bit less of a of a tell in terms of, you know, where, where are those really rapid increases? Uh, you don't really see that. I mean, here you've got the good run between February and March. Uh, and then you got that sort of flattening. But here you're getting that run again, which in fairness, I suppose, if you go in here and say, hey, Kevin, well, I mean, when did you have your big sell-offs? And line that up with uh, when you had your uh, your your spikes over here. In fairness, look at that. If we draw here, and then we draw another one right here. See, when we have this kind of slope on the ten year the uh, ten year break even, we kind of get that pain in the stock market. Whereas, look at this. The period over here, yeah, was was a lower slope right in January. Didn't really have that much, uh, almost flat over here. Certainly didn't have that growth uh, slope, but you even had that over here. You know, if you look at this sort of period here between the end of middle of March and uh, middle of April, this was actually a quiet time for stocks. 
It was really once you started getting that, that slope again. So I think when you put these lines in, the white line here and the red line here, it really helps us get a little bit more of an idea of, okay, that's another tool we could use. I like that. I like that. <laughs> New title, Draw Fancy Lines. <laughs> I like it. Uh, okay, folks, I'm going to get ready for the interview coming up in 45 minutes. Don't click out yet because you will get a reminder button that pops up in just about five seconds. So you can click remind and join the interview that occurs in 40 minutes. Can't wait to see you there. Thank you so much for watching. Get your two free stocks with Weeble by going to metkevin.com slash Weeble. And of course, check out the programs in that extended discount code down below to the moon. Use that link down below for the programs on building your wealth with lifetime access. See you soon, folks. Excited for the